Now, heart-wrenching story of determination and legal strife. Alexis Radcliffe, an 18-year-old quadriplegic, grapples with a hospital's attempt to uproot her from the place that she has known and her familiar surroundings. The teen desires the freedom to live closer to family and school, challenging the hospital's insistence on relocating her to a faraway nursing home. Radcliffe faces a relentless battle as she tries to defend her right to choose her living arrangements. And as the dispute unfolds, her plight underscores the broader systemic challenges in accommodating the needs of individuals with disabilities. Amidst this legal landscape, her quest for autonomy serves as a poignant reminder of the ongoing struggle for dignity and self-determination. This story is from NPR by Joseph Shapiro on February 22nd, 2024. I have a lot to say about this. This is a heart-wrenching story. I'm going to pass it to Richard first. Wow. You know, when I read this, it just uh, it, it brought some tears to my eyes. I have to be honest. This story demonstrates the major holes in some states, quote, safety nets, not to mention the lack of federal support. And, you know, when I think about this and what I know about our economy and our country, we have thousands of millionaires, hundreds of billionaires and several people with over a hundred billion dollars worth of net worth. Why can't we organize our society to help this young woman and others like her live a reasonably good life in the context of a major disability, a disability that could happen to anyone or one of us, one of our loved ones? So, Scott, what do you think? Well, I mean, you bringing up the economy. I mean, that's that's what we're talking about here. This is just a matter of dollars, plain and simple, right? We're we're uh, we have a healthcare system that is largely based on a for-profit model, and I, you know, to me, I personally, I think that that's immoral. I think having healthcare for for profit is is immoral. I think you're you're leveraging somebody's health and well-being. OK, they're the quality of their life versus somebody else's bottom line. And, and you know, to me, that's that's just an immoral, <laughs> uh, immoral comparison. And I, I think we see the same thing when we're talking about like prisons for profit and, and things like that. When we're talking about uh, the satisfaction that somebody can have in their life, the happiness, the 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 feeling good about yourself, feeling good with your body, feeling uh, healthy and strong and, and, and all of those kind of when you when you compare it, when you you when you put that on the seesaw with somebody's, you know, bag of gold at the other end, you know, it, inevitably, uh, you know, the people are going to suffer, even in cases where we have uh, good intentions, even, you know, I'm not saying that everybody involved with with healthcare is evil, but it's, it's, it's systemic, it's, a, it's, a, it's ingrained into the system, human beings are naturally greedy. And when, when they're given an opportunity to, to, you know, to put a little bit more in their pockets, then they will, especially when the, when the people that they're taking it from, when, if they don't have to deal with them, if they don't have to see them, if it's not in my backyard, right. Um, they've, they've done uh, psychological experiments where, um, where people were allowed to give shocks, electric shocks to strangers. And they found that uh, they had no problem, even if it was like a damaging shock. I, I, I seem to remember one experiment saying, even when they were told that it was a lethal level of electricity, I don't know if I, 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 I must, it seems like I must have been misreading that, but it very high levels of, of, of electric shock just because they couldn't see the person just because they didn't, you know, they weren't watching the person get the shock. And so just that in itself, I think is definitely part of the problem. Um, I've, I've seen uh, systems trying to work with a, with an ever shrinking budget. I used to work um, in Minneapolis public schools and, you know, there was this constant push to decrease, you know, do more with less, right? Do more with less. And so corners need to get cut. And it's not because the, you know, the principal or, or the administration of the school or even the district were wanting to be, were, were, it's not like they didn't care. It's not like they didn't feel bad about it. It's just like something had to give because they were, you know, they had, they were, were able to do less. And I, I, the impression that I got from this, uh, this article was that the, you know, the hospital was kind of in a, in a similar situation. It's not that they don't care about, uh, about this patient. It's, it's that they literally can't do everything that they want to do and they have to stop somewhere. They have to draw the line somewhere. Now, uh, that doesn't make what they're doing. Okay. 
but it does kind of at least give us a little bit of understanding of, of their motivation. Uh, you know, neither side here is in an enviable position. I don't want to give the impression that they don't want to don't want to help her, but you know, they, they, they're going to have to make some cuts somewhere. And I think what this highlights is that, uh, you know, this is all of our failure. I think we can all share uh, part of this failure as a nation, as a state. And, and um, you know, we need to decide how we want to direct our resources. It's not like uh, our country is resource poor. You know, we have, look at our military budget. I mean, I think they can squeeze a few shekels out of there. Uh, you know, look at these massive tax cuts for the rich, you know, huge tax break, tax breaks for the very rich and for rich corporations and so on, just because they happen to know some people that are in Congress. You know, it, it's, we, we can, if we want to decide as a group, as a together, as a family, if we want to start seeing all of, all of our, all of our fellow Americans as part of us and people of the world as well. Right. We, we can do it. We do have the resources to be able to make these changes. Uh, we just need to get the collective motivation to do it. And it's hard to do it when we have, uh, you know, people at the top making the actual decisions have strong personal motivations. It's that whole health care for profit kind of thing. Here we have legislation for profit. It's hard to it's it's hard to expect there to be. Uh, humanitarian legislation and humanistic legislation as well, right? As as a you know, as a as a show that promotes uh, uh, the secular humanist perspective, you know, that's what we're talking about here. We're talking about taking care of our people rather than follow, you know, um, the dictates of whoever happens to have the checkbook at the time. Infidel, what are your thoughts on that? One thing you said that I have to take issue with is the fact that things happen because they know someone in Congress or a legislature. No, I think it's more along the lines of because they've happened to have bought, been bought by, bought somebody in a legislature. So they Congress. know somebody on the Congress, right? They know financial, right? In, in a financial <laughs> sense. Yeah. yeah. yeah so I would agree with using that. A, using yeah, biblically, point. yeah, they know, they, 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 they know it very well. Yeah. And it, it's a shame that, that this young woman who has went through so much and, and persevere, persevered and, and everything I, I read about her seems that a very positive person considering that the deck was stacked up against her. And to see her in this situation and still being essentially coerced because according to the story, they told her, well, you know, if you don't agree to this, we'll send you somewhere further away. Right. And then, she hasn't even been outside of the hospital since August because she's afraid that if she leaves, they have said they won't let her back inside. So she's literally held hostage in one sense by the hospital, but you're right because this is something far bigger than the hospital. I, I don't think that there are people in the hospital conspiring to come down and, and do terrible things to this young woman. Uh, what they're doing is, is they are moving through the process because, you know, trust the process. And this type of mentality, you know, this is just the way it goes. This is just the way it is. And they're going through it. And it is a matter of resources. It's a matter of resources. And as you said, Scott, this is not a country that is resource poor. It's not like we're just barely scraping by. We have the ability to, to take care of this. And the reality is, is it wouldn't be any more expensive and most likely cheaper to put her in a home and have he home health and all these other things to come in and watch her and take care of her. In fact, they even said that in middle school, she was going to school on the bus. She was going actually to school. She was doing those type of things before her grandfather's health got so bad. But you would think that all those people that are con so concerned about life and call themselves pro-life should be all over this. This is a young woman who needs help, who wants to make the best of the situation she's in, who's doing everything she can to do that. You know, we hear pull yourself up by the bootstraps. Well, that's kind of a, a pretty bad thing to tell someone in her situation, uh, but that almost she's is almost it. what if, yes, she is. That's exactly the point because Look, 
I've got to tell you, if I was in her situation, I wouldn't be handling this nearly as well as she is. So we're seeing someone who's doing what they want to blame everyone else to say, this is your problem. She's doing everything right. And they're saying, well, it's just not enough. We're going to have to do what we have to do. No, this is a situation where we as a society need to understand that we can and must do better. Kelly? Yeah, I mean, that's part of what's wrong with this situation is that this girl has done everything wrong. And and, and I want to talk about her a little bit because I think we're kind of losing the person here in the problem. And I don't want to do that. I want to, I want to kind of tell the viewers a little bit about her. But before I do, Scott, you mentioned about maybe taking a little bit of money out of the military. And I just looked it up. One MRAP costs $10 million, just one. Just 10 of those is $100 million. Can you think of what that money would do to help out people like Alexis Radcliffe? That would go a lot. And that's just 10 armored trucks, 10 of them, mm. and just to put it in perspective. Now, Alexis, was uh, she was in a car accident. Her mother was driving on drugs. She had the vertebrae in her neck crush when she was 18 months old, and she has really never known life except for the condition that she's in she's gone to school she was raised by her grandfather um her father had uh his, her father died of a drug overdose not a couple of years after the accident um when her father her grandfather who was her adopted father retired he lost the house and she was moved to the hospital as a child she did go to, to the uh, middle school um she actually took the bus to middle school and uh, actually went to the high school too, on, not every day, but on special occasions did attend high school. She had an assistant from the hospital that was assigned to her to take her back and forth to the high school. So these, the, all these things of her care were not a problem before. And this girl has done, she, she's got a full scholarship to the college yeah right there in her town. She wants to go to the campus. She wants mm -hmm. to take her wheelchair there and attend mm -hmm. classes. And they are saying, no, you have to move to a nursing home in a different state. This isn't they're just kicking her out of the hospital. They literally want to move her to a different state right. away from the only her grandfather still lives here. She has an aunt, an uncle, two cousins that still lives here. She wants to be with her family. She wants to go to the school where she got the scholarship at. And they are saying that she can't do that. She has to go to this other place. And I find that super sad. And as Infidel mentioned, she can't even leave the hospital right now because if she goes out the front door, they are not going to let her back in. And they have told her that they would sue her for trespassing if she does it. So this is this is a real person. And th this is somebody that we need to get money for. And you always hear people complaining, I don't want my taxes going to people I, 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 that don't work for it. This girl's working for it. She might not be out there earning the living, but this girl is working for it and she deserves it. And this is the very face of the people that we need to see to know where your tax money goes so that you know it's going to a worthy cause. Richard? Well, a couple of things. One, one little personal thing to add with what you said. Uh, the college has said that if she can get there, they will, whatever classes she's have, they'll put them in yep. accessible classrooms. Yep. Yep. So they're, they're going to come to help her. Yes. Um, you know, I've been an advocate for national health care since I was about 20. And partly that was just studying Europe and some things. And, you know, <clears throat> it's not like other people haven't done it and don't do it. And I just want to give people one little example of a story I read a few months ago. A woman had a baby in Denmark, and the baby was born with some serious problems. She was in the hospital the second day. A woman shows up and says to her, hi, I'm here to help you. And she goes, what? Do I have to pay for this? No, it's part of our social services. So she was immediately assigned a woman to help her to take care of her disabled baby. I mean... That's humanity, you know, and, and, and there's a job for somebody, right? But they're, what they're doing is important, and it's just, uh, it just, you know, I mean, and then on the other side of it, we have this, this uh, Alabama Supreme Court that gets all biblical and talks about frozen embryo, embryos, our children, uh, and yet 
you know, I'm sure they probably wouldn't do anything to get this poor woman any more money. I mean, a whole track tax structure has, has gotten really, you know, back because I'm a little older than most of you back in the sixties and seventies, uh, before Reagan came along, the highest tax rate for billionaires was 70%. And now it's about 25%. So the money's out there. It's just not going to the right places. And, you know, uh, it's just exactly what uh, our friend Invital 64 said. It's the plain brown wrappers delivered in the dead of night to the legislators, for the <laughs> Benjamins that stop us from, you know, like Obamacare. Do you know that Obamacare was put together? I can't remember the guy's name, but he, he was a Montana senator, a Democrat, but a very corporate Democrat. It was put together in his office with medical company lobbyists. They were there helping write it. So, you know, this is this is what happens here. And, you know, we, we got a lot of work to do. Uh, I got grandkids. I'd like to have live in a wonderful country. And it, it's there's a lot of stuff that needs to get done to make it a little more human around here and not so much, you know, profits before everything else. Right, right. Hey, so Scott, yeah. what do you think? Well, you make a strong argument for universal health care, but uh, but that setting that aside for a second, I I, I think you know we, we as a country owe Alexis an apology. I mean, she you know the system is failing her, and and um, you know we like to talk about how oh America is the greatest country in the world. Well. We, you know, we got to step up to the plate here. We're going to have to show it. You know, we're going to have to put our money where our mouth is if, if, if we want to do that. You know, here we have uh, people. Kelly, you, you said that she she wanted to attend her high school. She actually had to sue to go to her graduation. Mm -hmm. She had to sue them to, so right, that yeah. they would allow her to come. So, you know, they maybe they didn't want to build a ramp or something like that. Who knows what? Right. You know, it, it's like she's fighting the system. But really, all she's fighting for is just a right to be just like the rest of us. You know, she has, um, you know, she, she's she's a person, she's a human being, and, and we need to respect that. And we're not, we're not respecting her humanity. And it's, it's, you know, I, you got to hand it to her, you know, to, to be able to, to go through what she has physically, first of all, with her accident and her physical difficulties growing up, but then also to have the society that you're lean, that you're relying on to, to treat you this way has got to be, I don't know, it's got to be crushing. And, and, and so, you know, you really have to hand it to her for, for, uh, for being so positive. And I think that she's, uh, I think that her motivation and, and her attitude, I think is a good, uh, a good example for, for, you know, many, many people that are in a similar situation. Um, I tell my students uh, that disability accommodations are put in place so that it's not to give anybody an edge, it's to give everybody an even playing field. We want to, we want to give everybody a chance to be successful. I want my students, uh, even if they have ADHD, even if they have vision problems, even if they have difficulty reading, even if they have memory issues, even if they have physical issues that prevent them from coming into class I want them to all be successful in my class I want them to all have an opportunity to not ask for necessarily for handouts but to add but an opportunity to do for oneself and that's really all she wants she just wants to be able to do for herself she's put in the time she's she's been a successful student she got an academic scholarship to the college and you know, she just needs a little bit of help doing the same things that the rest of us do every day. The rest of us, the same things that the rest of us take, you know, take for granted. Um, and and the the fact that so many people can just look away, can just you know, it's just it's it's not affecting me directly. So you know, I I can just uh, you know, I'll I'll. I'll accept that uh, nice tax refund or whatever it is, and you know we'll we'll call it a day. And it's just, it's it's a matter of priorities. It's a matter of financial priorities. It's a matter of of social priorities. It's a matter of just showing love. Okay, where's the love? You know, that's let's let's just love each other. How about let's try that? Let's let's give that a shot. You know, give love a chance, right? That's 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 what I would like to see, and and that's not what I'm seeing here. And uh, but Alexis, thank you for sharing your story. 
thank you for being vocal about it. She's been uh, upfront. She's talked to, to news people. She's, you know, she could just as easily have crawled into a corner and, 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 you know, just sat out the rest of her life, but no, she wants to, she wants to not only build her own life, but she wants to help other people that are in a similar situation. And so thank you for that, Alexis. That's, I think that's an important message um, that, that we should all listen to and take to heart and, 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 um, I should probably stop talking there. Infidel, what are, what are your thoughts? It amazes me that we find ourselves in a situation where we're even having to discuss this because Alexis, as Kelly mentioned earlier, is doing everything right. She's going above and beyond. She's done her part. We're the ones failing her. And when I say we, I mean collectively because – I'll tell you this, and, and I, I do think that I speak for every single one of us. I would happily see billionaires in this country not get another tax cut if it meant that not just Alexis, but the thousands of people that are under 30 years old that are sitting and living in assisted living facilities right now had an opportunity at a life because – we talk about people being judged by their behaviors. We are judged by how we treat the least of us. And not yep. that I'm saying she's the least of us, but in physical capability, she's pretty limited. But in resolve, I, I think she's stronger than a lot of the people that we know, including myself. Mm -hmm. So I hope that more exposure to this story can help people understand that this isn't just about some some young woman in a hospital who is stuck between a rock and a hard place, but this is about her as a human being, as a person. And for that, we need to all recognize that something has to be done. Yeah, Kelly. Yeah, I I just want to uh, put it out there that I Alexis is really a an amazing person and i hope yes. i truly hope she gets this resolved and gets the resolution that she that she needs um it's hard for me to, it's hard for me to think about it um it's yeah we, this is a great this is a great topic i think it needs to be discussed more and if you'd like to discuss it more check out the fan run facebook group and discord server and if you'd like more than on crop pop Profits, just click right here.